Would you have moved differently in Syria given this eruption in Iraq uh, and given that the chaos uh, has spilled over now? I, I, you know, if, if what you're suggesting is that there was a simple solution in Syria that would have avoided the civil war and chaos there, um, that's just not true. Uh, you know, you had a, uh, a ruthless dictator uh, that uh, started killing his own people. And you had the, the makings of a moderate opposition that still exist and that we still work with, uh, but uh, not uh, an opposition that was going to be in a position anytime soon to be able to compete with an army, Hezbollah, uh, Iran and Russia supporting uh, uh, the regime. Uh, they just weren't going to be able to do that. And they certainly weren't going to be able to uh, immediately compete with uh, a bunch of hardened jihadists uh, who had moved into the vacuum in some of these areas. So uh, you know, I, I think that one of the things that uh, the American people at least understand is that uh, these societies are going through these uh, enormous transformations. Hey, Miko, we were commenting while we were watching your interview, and I, we've watched this guy for eight years now. I've never seen a less engaged look in his eyes. He almost seemed, I don't want to say checked out because that's not the right thing, but I, watching him, his cadence was different. It, he, he feels like he almost wants to go home at this point. It's Very quick, the criticism that I think has the most resonance from Republicans as a matter of uh, politics in the short term and the medium term is that he's not taking control of things. His analysis of how difficult the problems are with your in your interview, I think, was very nuanced, very accurate. What some people are saying is, yeah, they're big problems. It's up to the President of the United States to take some bold action to try to address them, not just sit and say, here's why this is hard, here's why this is hard, here's why this well, is hard. Well, 